Concord, a game that seemingly nobody asked for, has launched, and not only did nobody seem to care, virtually nobody played the game either. The 5v5 hero shooter never even topped more than 700 concurrent players on Steam, and while many were quick to defend the abysmal score that the game currently has on the PlayStation Store, a 59%, because they said that folks were scoring the demo, and that was included in the full launch version of the game, it's important to point out that the game is practically lock in step with a 6 66% on Steam. Much of the dialogue surrounding the game has centered around two big themes. Folks who are quickly dismissing the game after looking at the gameplay, or maybe they tried out the demo, and then those who thought the game was fun and worth playing. Neither side, however, is in disagreement about the game commercially flopping. Current estimates are that the game only sold 25,000 copies, and if this is even remotely accurate, there is nothing else to call this other than than total commercial disaster. So, if even those who are enjoying the game are in agreement that the game has flopped, which that'd be hard for them to deny given the rapidly declining player numbers will make it almost impossible for them to find a match, then there are some questions worth asking for the future of the studio as well as live service games in general, and even more specifically for PlayStation's live service game aspirations. So, why did this game flop so terribly? How does something like this happen? happen and better yet what's the solution going forward now every weekday here on reforge gaming i tell you what i think about a gaming topic and then we go to a live stream where i want to hear what you think so if you like this content and you want more hit like and subscribe The first thing I want to say is that the packaging matters. We've all been at the grocery store or the toy store and seen the packaging of something that really got our attention. And more than just getting our attention, it can function as a psychological stimulant to actually buy the product. Lots of money and research goes into color usage, font choice, and the overall packaging of products. And Concord made some significant mistakes in this area. First, the font choice, color scheme, and artwork, and the initial cinematic trailer all had a really strong feel and vibe sort of a 80s sort of retro feel and it even harkens back I think to the criticism that I gave PlayStation during their showcase when the Concord teaser trailer debuted I argued at the time that the trailer communicated literally nothing to the player and this was never more proven true than when the second cinematic trailer dropped a year later What some critically referred to as Guardians of the Galaxy at home, the trailer with all the various characters interacting with each other in a near-bumbled heist attempt, well, it seemed like a very different tone than the first trailer. More than that, it felt derivative and cheap. And I don't mean cheap as in, like, cheaply made. The quality was certainly there, and so was the voice acting. But cheap as in it felt like they were practically winking and nodding throughout the trailer, like, hey, do you get this? This is like the plucky Marvel-style story telling that everybody loves right it sort of had that vibe of hello fellow kids right more than that it all led to a gameplay trailer that was all too familiar it featured gunplay and maps that felt as if they were directly lifted from destiny and it even showcased character dodges on the ground an in-air dash and a ground pound that looked like one-to-one animations taken right out of destiny i have never seen a game set the stage for disinterest faster than this Even if the character-driven trailer wasn't so Guardians of the Galaxy inspired, it is really ambitious, I think, to have so many characters in just one trailer. It really makes it unlikely for the audience to connect with any of them, which is connected to just how thematically juxtaposed this game is, but I'll touch more on that later. So with the immediate reception of the gameplay and the characters being pretty negative, let's talk about the second and even bigger reason that this game flopped, and it pertains to why the quality of the gameplay ultimately didn't matter. It might sound weird to say that one of the main reasons a game flopped is because the gameplay didn't matter, but let me explain. The minute I saw the gameplay for this, after hearing it would be a 5v5 hero shooter, I simply asked the question, why? Why bring something to the market that feels like it already has run its course? And more than just hitting a genre category that feels tired, whenever you decide to place your game in a category like this, you're facing two big challenges. First, if the game is not familiar enough and it doesn't really 
signal to fans of hero shooters that it's going to have things that they might like, they may just dismiss it almost immediately. And secondly, once you do start signaling to hero shooter fans that your game has familiar things in it, well, now you're entering into a context of comparison. Will the heroes look and feel as good to play as maybe a game like Overwatch? Will the guns look and feel as good as a game like Destiny? These are the pitfalls of making a game that is largely derivative of other games. You have to make it familiar enough to appeal to fans of the genre, while also innovating enough to make your game stand out and feel unique. And largely, Concord failed to do that. It made the game feel like it had an expiration date on it from three years ago. Like spoiled milk that somehow still made it to the shelf of the grocery store, everyone took one look at it and said, that's spoiled. Even if they would have managed to jump through this first ring of fire, they faced another undeniable challenge. The market is already saturated with incredibly popular free-to-play PvP games. So, who is going to willingly pay $40 for a 5v5 arena hero shooter when they have an ocean of free options if they like playing PvP games? And all of this was compounded by the fact that arena shooters do not seem to have legs in the market anymore. Those of us who grew up with arena shooters like Quake and Unreal Tournament in even the more modern interpretations of like a 6v6 arena sized map in a game like Call of Duty, well most of us have either aged out and we don't really like playing these games anymore, or many have just switched to Battle Royale, and the younger generation behind us has culturally bonded in gaming with their friends and their age demographic on the fields of the Battle Royales. Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Call of Duty Warzone all coexist because there are just so many gamers that prefer Battle Royales over arena shooters. So, when it comes to arena shooters, I don't think the future is nearly as strong. After what seemed like a strong start, X Defiant is currently facing a rapidly declining player base. Recently, Insider Gaming published an article titled X Defiant is on borrowed time as player numbers decline rapidly. This just adds credence to something that I have been saying since the debate about Concord started. I just don't think arena shooters have legs in today's market. The gameplay feels like a meat grinder, and it's difficult to conceive of reasons to come back week after week and month after month. I've made similar observations after the Splitgate 2 developers said they wanted their game to last for 10 years. I just don't see that happening in light of the current trends. And just before I say what I think the solution is for live service games, and especially for PlayStation live service efforts, the last thing that makes this game a lame duck is, as I said before, it is thematically juxtaposed. When a 5v5 arena hero shooter promised a weekly cinematic, I asked the same question I had already asked numerous times. Why? Fans of these games aren't typically logging in and hoping for a cutscene. Typically, what keeps these types of games going is new maps, new modes, new heroes, events, season passes, cosmetics, and a whole host of other methods of motivating people to come back and log in. And I'm not saying they aren't doing that, but the focus on a weekly cutscene? Who is that for? I, for one, would have loved this to have been a PvE extraction type of game with loot and abilities. The character abilities, the movement, the gunplay, they're all quite good. But as I said, the gameplay didn't matter. And I don't want to just leave it there in sort of a negative reason as to why did this game flop? Well, the packaging set the game up for disinterest, and the gameplay didn't matter because it felt out of step and out of date. So... What's the solution going forward? When it comes to live service games, I am going to continue to bang on this drum. If you want your game to have a long tail form of engagement, you've got to start using early access. It is practically impossible to correctly guess what players will want so far in advance, especially when your game's success is going to rise and fall on having a full and engaged player funnel. Right now, try to guess what the popular live service gaming trends will be in 2029. You, you can't really do it. Based on the games that we have seen have such great success, there is no deducible pattern. There's no recipe here. Everybody keeps thinking they can just throw a season pass or cosmetics at the player base and then people will just keep coming in. That's not what made really popular live service games popular. It's simply what kept them going. More than that, the popularity in games is often driven by something organic. I call it organic virality. Suddenly, a 
bunch of streamers played Among Us, and then that game exploded, so much so that the developers halted production of their sequel, and they dedicated all their time to the existing game. Or, look at the way that Fortnite blew up. It was so explosive that Epic completely changed course on a number of directives and games, and this is why early access could be so beneficial. Rather than blindly guessing what will be a hit, you can symbiotically make something that people actually want to play. Obviously, a huge challenge here is you have to have funding to spin up the servers, and that can be very expensive. But if I'm looking at PlayStation and the budgets of their games that are going to be developed over the course of four to six years, I have to think that a smaller incubated concept could hit the market after just two or three years and then iterate from there with public feedback. This could save you from making foundational mistakes. If you bake too much unwanted or outdated elements into the crust, you cannot expect people are going to want to consume what you have made. I can't help but think that a completely different game would have benefited from this. Diablo 4 is just now starting to right the ship, and they could have done this in a lot of an easy way if they just would have launched their game into early access. This is why I think Path of Exile 2 is setting itself up for massive success. Stop trend chasing, because honestly, early access is how you keep yourself from doing this. You aren't chasing a trend if you're creating a context for organic feedback in a game that would feel more emergent. In other words, instead of saying, well, this is really popular, let's make a game like this and then bring it to market five or four years later, you would instead foster an environment for a game to emerge out of the current context that the game will exist in. Another benefit of this is that it would allow teams to experiment more and take greater risks. Smaller teams and smaller games continue to prove this to be true. You can see they innovate more, they try crazy things, and sometimes it's a huge hit. This is typically where the magic happens. Nobody could have guessed that the building mechanics of Fortnite's tower defense game would spawn a whole new type of battle royale. So the next big live service game doesn't have to be a guessing game, and it certainly doesn't have to be a flop like Concord. But those are just my thoughts, and now it's time to hear your thoughts. And you can do that in a comment below, or come to the live stream, which will be in a card right here, or in a link below. We will pin that link if you want to come discuss this with me. And if you like this content and you want more like it, please remember to like, share, and subscribe.